If you want your characters in your mangas, comics, or novels to be able to use amazing powers and abilities, it's also highly important that you develop an understandable power system that you can display and show throughout your story. In today's video, I want to talk about how you can create your very own power system that will be unique and compelling for the series that you want to tell for your mangas, comics, or light novels. If you don't already know me, my name is Annette Cross and on this channel I dedicate all my videos to helping you turn your manga into a masterpiece. When you're developing a power system, whether it be for a fantasy story with a magic system or another type of story like a shonen, a shoujo or a magical girl story, you really need to consider how you can develop a well thought out power system and I believe a good way to do that is to consider Brandon Sanderson's three laws of magic. And while these laws of magic suit fantasy world building, I have found over the years of practicing this technique that these three laws of magic can make a more effective power system and make a power system that is more realistic and entertaining to an audience. So let's now discuss Sanderson's three laws of magic and how you can apply these laws to creating a power system in your story. The first law is an author's ability to solve conflict with magic is directly proportional to how well the reader understands said magic. So basically what this means is that when a character in your book is solving a problem with magic, you need to ensure that you have explained that magic or that powerful ability before showing it. Otherwise your audience might be left saying, well, how did that character do that? What is the purpose of this power here? And so by explaining the powers beforehand, you can ensure that your readers understand the power well enough to help it make sense in the context of your story. Now the second law of magic is weaknesses, limits and costs are more interesting than powers. Essentially what this means is that when you are displaying your character's powers, it's more interesting to your audience to know what your character can't do with their abilities rather than what they can do. For example, if you give your character many, many abilities and you have them using those different abilities all the time, it can actually get a bit tedious over the course of the story if your character is constantly able to solve problems with any of these abilities. Your character just pulls their ability out of the air and just saves the day. And while that can be interesting at first, it can get a bit tedious and a bit confusing over time. So I highly recommend that what you do, you try simplifying your character's abilities and focus more on what they cannot do rather than what they can do. So essentially, when your characters can solve anything with their powers at any given time, it can actually make your story less interesting. Instead, you want to focus on the weaknesses and limitations because those are the things that make your story really interesting and unique. And that's especially important when you're developing a power system. Instead of focusing on all the things your characters can do, instead try focusing more on your character's limitations, what they cannot do, and how those things that they cannot do may affect the story and affect how you present that story to your audience. And finally, Brandon Sanderson's third law of magic is that the author should expand on what is already a part of the magic system before something entirely new is added, as this may otherwise entirely change how the magic system fits into the fictional world. So as I was mentioning before, when you add too many powers to your power system, it can get a bit confusing to your audience. So instead, it's better to focus on the power system ideas you already have and expand on those ideas before you add new ones. So for example, if you have a power system based off water, it would be best to expand on those power system ideas of water before going to another element, for example, like fire. So with water, you might have some little water abilities like for example, being able to create a wave or being able to create rain. And then as you go further, your characters can have tsunamis or larger amounts of water that they are able to manipulate and control. And then from there, once you have fully developed those water abilities, then you could go further and develop new powers such as fire powers or earth powers and go further with that. So those are Brandon Sanderson's three laws of magic and that is how you can apply it to creating a power system. So let's go further and discuss how you can specifically create an amazing Amazing power system for your mangas, comics, or novels. So first of all, the most important thing you want to do is focus on what your target audience or target genre is. The truth is different power systems need to be shown in different ways depending on the audience that you are presenting them to. 
If you're presenting your power system to a younger audience, you'd be less likely to focus on the complexities of the power system and it'd be better to focus more on the simplisticness of it and focus more on flashy abilities or interesting powers and that would appeal more to a younger audience. The older your target audience gets, the more you can focus on developing powerful and complicated power systems and in this way when you are deciding who you want to target your story towards, it's much easier to be able to hone into that target audience and make it appeal more mostly to them. So by considering who you want to present this power system to, it should be much easier to consider how you should write your power system in order to present it most effectively to that audience. My second tip for developing an amazing power system is to decide on the source of the power. With any power system, there will always be a source of the power. The power has to come from somewhere. And it's really important that you as the author decide exactly where that power is coming from. Otherwise, it might be a little bit strange and confusing in your story. So in some examples, a lot of power systems stem from a certain type of fantasy character. For example, if there is a mythological character in your story, they might be able to grant characters powers. And that granting of the powers becomes the power system. It's how your characters develop their powers. Now, as well as this, you might find that the source of power in your story might come from a certain location. There might be a certain magical item or a certain object or a certain location with very magical properties. And so when your characters go there, they develop powers. And so that location, item or object is the power source in your book. For a character to develop powers in your book, they may also have to go through a certain criteria or experience something. For example, maybe if your characters have gone through a certain experience, for example, if your character has nearly died and then they've come back to life, maybe that causes them to develop powers. And so that in turn causes a power system. Any characters who have met that criteria end up developing powers. Your characters might also have to drink a certain potion or eat a certain food in order to develop powers. Similar to how in One Piece, the characters have to eat the gum gum fruits in order to develop their powers. You could even have it that the power system doesn't really have a certain source, like in My Hero Academia where characters can or cannot be born with a quirk. So you really need to consider exactly where the powers in your story are coming from and how characters might be able to develop those powers because that can make your power system a lot more realistic and well developed. My third tip is to decide on the limitations and rules. When you're developing a power system, in order to make sure that it is still realistic to your audience, it's very important to decide on the limitations and rules behind the power system. So essentially, this is relating to Brandon Sanderson's second law of magic, talking about the limitations, and this is very important when you're developing any type of power system. It's important to consider what your characters cannot do more than what they can do. Some common limitations that you might want to add in your power system is that certain powers might have a time limit, your characters might have to do something to sort of charge up their powers, your characters might only be able to use their powers for a certain amount of time, or maybe your characters always have access to their powers but it ends up wearing them out if they're using it all the time. So by creating some limitations and rules for the power system and thinking about what these limitations and rules might mean to your characters who use these powers, it could create a much more realistic and well-developed power system. My fourth tip is break your power system into categories. By breaking the power system down into categories, it can make it much more easy to digest to your audience. So to know how you divide it into categories, it really depends on what types of powers your characters have. So in the case of Sailor Moon, for example, all the characters have different planets as their main power source, and so they use powers that are kind of based off the power source. And even in the case of Avatar The Last Airbender, that is also a power system divided into categories because there are the powers based off air, fire, water, and earth. So when you're developing your power system, a great way to make it easier for your readers to understand and for you as the author to create is to divide that power system into categories and present it to your audience in the categories. And that way, it makes the power system a lot more easier to create. Some examples of other power system categories that you might like to consider could be a power system based off different foods and the foods are the different categories. Or there could be a power system based off flowers and so the flowers make each different category in the power system. So when you divide it into different categories, it can make it much more easy to understand. My fifth tip is consider the effects of the powers. 
You have to understand that when you're creating a power system, these powers should not be taken lightly. And whenever your character uses a power or ability, there should always be some sort of consequence or effect from their actions. So you need to consider how powerful each types of powers in your power system are and how it might affect the world around your characters. For example, if your character were to use a power that explodes, there would likely be a lot of very exploded buildings or exploded items around that character because they're just destroying everything around them from their powers. Or if your character had water powers, maybe they would constantly be having water over all these different items around them. For example, if your character is able to make flowers grow out of anything, then they may be able to be able to protect the environment and help the environment more by growing flowers in all these different locations. You really need to consider while you're developing the powers in your power system, you need to think about what the consequences of those powers are. If your character had a really destructive and dangerous power, then it shouldn't be taken lightly. You need to consider what the consequences behind that power would be and ensure that when your character is using those powers, there is a effective consequence because of those powers. It would make sense that those powers would affect something in various ways, whether they be positive or negative ways. And this goes for any type of character's powers, whether they be minor powers or very major powers that might affect the world as a whole. My sixth tip is give your power system a genre. Now we did talk about this a bit in the first tip, however I want to bring it up again because giving your power system a genre can help you to more effectively create it, and helps you to also present it in a more compelling way. So you really need to consider what your main genre is, or what the power system genre is, and how that might affect the way the power system is shown. For example, in a fantasy power system, you might find that the power system revolves a lot more around magic and spells, and so that is the type of genre you really want to target in that specific power system. Well, for example, if the power system is in the shonen genre, you might have a power system that has a lot more action and a lot more interesting and entertaining powers for that audience to really draw them into that power system and make them interested to read more. Or for example, if it were a magical world power system, like in the case of Sailor Moon, that power system might show in a much more colourful and bright and cheerful way. So deciding on the genre of your power system can help you to develop it a lot more effectively because then you understand better what types of people might be reading your book and what types of power systems they might like to see. This can help you in all aspects of developing your power system, whether it be showing your character's powers or creating those powers and how those characters might transform. My seventh tip is consider magic or science-based power system. When developing fictional worlds and understanding world building, I have found that there are two types of fictional worlds out there. There are magical-based worlds and there are science-based worlds. Now our world is more of a science-based world because we revolve around technology and science to go through our day-to-day -day lives. We use computers and we use technology to help us do things every single day. So when you are creating a world, you need to really ask yourself, is this world more of a magic-based world or more of a science-based world? And that can help you to change the power system. So some examples of magic-based worlds are worlds that might be in the high fantasy genre or in the fantasy genre in general that revolve around magic in the character's day-to-day -day lives. A world that combines the two and becomes a science and magic-based world is a world that might have some aspects where the characters use magic and other aspects where the characters are more focused on using science, but they may also merge the two and have scientific development run on magic, for example. And so when you consider if the world is science or magic-based or a mix of both, it can help you to change the power system to be more effective for that world. In a science-based world, it's likely that the power system would be more technologically based, so it would have a lot more sciencey aspects and would use technology to help things run in the power system. Whereas if your world is more magic-based, the power system would be likely more rooted in magic and spells and be likely more sourced off a different type of mythological power. If you are creating a power system that is a mix between the two, your characters might have powers that are more centered around technology or have a more sciencey background, but they might also be run in a more magical way. And you might not want to explain every little sciencey aspect about it. So as you think about your power system, think about whether your world is magic or science based and how that might affect the power system's development. My eighth tip is give the power system a history. By considering the history behind the power system, you can think about how this power system might have affected characters back in the past. You really need to think about, did this power system have a recent origin or has this power system been around for years? 
If the power system has been around for centuries, then it's very likely that throughout history you would show different characters using the powers, whether it be in secret or not in secret. But as you are showing your power system and developing it in your story, it's really important to consider the history because the history is how your characters got to this current moment. Now, if this is a new power system, obviously there would be no history behind it. Maybe it's simply a matter of your character finding a certain magical object or finding a certain mythological character who granted them powers. And so that means that this whole power system is pretty new. But if the power system does have a root in history and characters have been using it for quite a while, you need to consider how other characters in the world of your book might react to that magic or react to your character using those powers. And that brings me to my next tip, which is my knife tip. Consider how other characters in your book react to the power system. Now this is all really dependent on what type of power system you have and really the history of the power system because if all the characters in your book have powers similar to the world of my hero, the other characters in your book will likely not really act that surprised when your character uses powers because it's normal and it's commonplace. But if the powers are supposed to be used in secret and no one is meant to know about them, then your character would be more inclined to hide those powers or make, maybe keep their power system a lot more secretive. Perhaps there's only certain people or characters in the world of your book that are allowed to know about the power system and who practice that power system, but there might be other characters in the book who might not know about that power system at all. But when developing your power system, it's also pretty important to consider how other characters might respond to the power system and how that might cause them to change the way they react to those characters or change the way they act in their daily life, wherever it be that those characters are more confident to show off their abilities to the people around them or whether they might have to hide their power system in secret. My tenth tip is integrate your power system with the plot. Once you have developed an amazing power system, it's really important to properly integrate it with your story in order to present it to your audience in the best possible way. I think the greatest way to do this is to really show it through the story you're telling. And a good way to do this is just simply show your characters going about their daily lives. Rather than info dumping your audience with a whole lot of information about the power system, instead show how your characters use that power system instead. So instead of explaining to your audience how your characters might use the powers, instead show your character using those powers in various ways. They might be using it in their day-to-day -day lives or they might have to use their powers in secret. They might only use their powers when the time comes for it, such as in a battle or when they need to stop a bad enemy. Whichever way it is, integrating it with the plot is all up to how you display it to your audience. If your character has just received these abilities from whether it be a mythological source or a magical item or an object or a location, they would also be learning about the power system with the readers as well. And so that's a good opportunity to explain it as well without necessarily info dumping the audience. So however it is, consider how you might explain that power system to your audience and try and slowly integrate it with the plot so that your readers can experience that power system along with your characters. So thank you so much for watching my video today, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what kind of power system you're developing in your stories because I'd really love to hear about them. Feel free to chat with me on any of my social media and the next cross because I always enjoy hearing about the projects that you're creating. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!